for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad. She's as always got a new tip video for you guys today. Today, I'm going to be going over seven tells on defense that can give away your opponent's offense before they even snap the ball, before they even call the play. These are things that are going to be available to you at all points and times throughout the game. So, if you want to get better at defense, these are things that can give you a huge advantage throughout the entire game if you know what to look for. Now, as always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's go and get right into the video. Now, the first tell is actually a glitch in the game, but it's not necessarily something that comes in handy a lot. But a lot of people don't know that you can actually see your opponent's name at any given time on any given play of the player that they are currently controlling. In pass plays, you cannot select a lineman. So at any point in time, if you ever see a lineman's name pop up, that means that your opponent made a mistake and selected a lineman when maybe trying to rotate to a receiver or something like that to basically shift. If at any point in time you see a lineman's name, it is a dead giveaway that this is a run play and you can immediately run commit to stop the run. To run commit, just hit the RB or R1 button and down on the right stick. Now the next tell is something that should be more prominent, but ultimately the defense pick a play screen gives away everything you need to know about your opponent's offensive personnel, whether it's the formation they're in, whether it's the amount of tight ends or receivers they have. Typically, if you have more receivers than tight ends, it's going to be a pass play. And typically, if you have more tight ends than receivers, it's going to be a run play. It's really that simple. It's not something that's 100% guaranteed, but you know, playing defense when you don't know the play is really all about playing the percentages. And when you see things like this, it's a pretty heavy tell that your opponent is going to be playing a certain type of way. On the defensive side here, I was angling at a nickel 335 odd, just something Thing that's you know more of a base defense which people typically run but the second that I saw this heavy offensive personnel package which you should always be watching I immediately switched over to a much heavier 4-3 uh, cover four quarters which is typically one of my better run defenses now with all that being said this is the first play of the game I have no idea how my opponent likes to run his offense but like I said defense when you don't know what your opponent's going to do is typically about playing the percentages and on this first play I played the percentages and I didn't win but ultimately I still feel like I called a good defense considering Considering what my opponent was looking at, he just basically beat my cover for quarter safety. That brings me to my next tip, which is also a very important tip. We're going to go right back to the exact same pick a defense screen, and that's the formation, which is something I didn't go over originally. When you have a formation like this, which is even, two wide receivers, two tight ends, it's really not a good tell in any way whether it's going to be a run or a pass, but the formation is probably the most important thing. Because he's coming out in a gun formation, that's not necessarily a formation where a lot of people like to run out of, or at least not the run a lot out of because you really don't have a lot of choices when it comes to where to run when it comes to the alignment where the running back is compared to where the quarterback is you really only have one successful series of run plays and that's typically right up the middle because the running back has to take the handoff from the quarterback I mean there are a couple of different uh, you know variations that some people like to run like a counter play or like uh, a wide read um, you know there are you know running plays that do go in other directions they're just not as successful as inside zones, draws, and halfback base plays, so they really don't get used a lot. So if you're going to be a running player, nine times out of ten, you're typically going to run the ball out of a single back or out of uh, something like an eye formation where you're under center because you have a lot more angles when it comes to where you can run the ball. You can run the ball to the outside. You can run the ball to the inside more effectively. You can flip the play. You can't even flip the play in a shotgun. You can't even uh, make you know simple audibles in a shotgun. So a lot of people don't run successfully out of shotgun formations. So anytime you see somebody in a shotgun formation, uh, it's pretty much a tell that running is secondary and if they're in a single back or an eye form they're probably a run first player you can really treat this like a mathematical formula when you look at the receivers to tight ends ratio on this next play here three wide receivers to one tight end it's basically a plus two you have two more receivers and tight ends so that makes it that much more likely it's going to be a pass play then when you look at the fact that he's in a gun formation that's an additional plus one so you're basically to the point now where you have a plus three which is a 75 percent chance more of passing than running based off of these tells and that's a mathematical formula you can use throughout the game, but you could also use it early in the game when you really don't know what your opponent likes to do yet. Now, in this next play, I put all these factors into the equation, and you can see he actually does pass. Of course, we get a broken up play, and that brings me to my next point, which is one of the better tells. That's down and distance. Now, this is something that really doesn't come up until you get to second 
third, fourth down. First and 10, first and whatever, that doesn't necessarily become a tell. But once your opponent gets to second and long or second and short, it becomes more obvious what they might do in the next play. Going to the play call screen one more time, you can see he's in a gun formation. He's still got the two wide receivers and two tight ends. So there's no real tell here except for the fact that he's in a gun formation. So we got our plus one, making it more likely he's going to pass. And on the next play, we're going to basically bring the heat because we're expecting that once again. Sure enough, he does pass. We get some heat, and he basically has to throw it away uh, with some pressure on his face, and he does not get a completion. So now we're in third and ten. Third and ten is a much bigger tell. This is going to be something where you know essentially he's going to have to pass on a third and ten. So based on the fact that I see he's on a third and long, it doesn't really matter what I'm looking at as far as the uh, pick a play defense because I'm not going to fall for that. He's got three tight ends. He's not going to run the ball here. That makes absolutely no sense. So we're going to disregard that. The down and distance on something like this is a much bigger tell than the actual formation that he's in. We've already seen that he's passed out of this formation in the past anyway, so I'm not going to fall for that and play the run. I'm going to come out. I'm going to play the pass heavy. I'm going to come out one of my better pass defenses. I'm going to come out a nickel blitz. If he runs the ball, the chances of him picking up a first down on third and 10 isn't very good anyway uh, so ultimately I just want to basically stack my defense as much as I can uh, towards pass defense so third and 10 is my indicator my opponent is going to basically uh, be under pressure right away once again and you're going to see how he basically throws it up we get an easy interception and we're coming the other way a lot of this wouldn't have happened if I didn't have a speed advantage on the field based on the fact that I had multiple safeties and cornerbacks out there to cover his tight ends but ultimately you can see how successfully that can work out now my next tip is going to be another Another thing which you're always looking at and that's the score now if you're only up seven nothing or the score is zero zero that's not really an indicator but ultimately if somebody is down they're more likely to pass and if somebody is up they're more likely to run because ultimately we're always playing a clock game so at the end of the day seven nothing isn't a huge tell but if you get up say 14 nothing or you get up any point in time you're up two scores this is a much heavier indicator that your opponent's going to get more aggressive when it comes to passing because anytime you're down you have to come back as quick as possible there's only so much time in this game so my opponent here down 14 nothing he's obviously going to become a much higher you know percentage passer and a much more aggressive passer throwing the ball deep so these indicators can not only give away what you're going to do but can also give away wh where you're going to do it or how you're going to do it as people are typically going to force the ball deeper based off of the amount of you know points that they're down now the next tell is the time clock. This is especially important when it comes to second and fourth quarter. You can really split the game in half when it comes to you know first and third quarter isn't as much of an indicator, but when it gets to second and fourth quarter, that's going to be much higher of an indicator. And it also depends on whether you're up or down on the scoreboard. If you're up, you're more likely to run and be happy with being up. If you're down, you're much more likely to pass uh, because you pretty much have to score, especially if you're down two scores like my opponent is here. And you can see on the very next play, he's in a situation where he's forcing it, come up with a user lurk and we're going the other way and essentially my opponent quits the game after this. There's a lot of different scenarios where this can play out. Like in this scenario here, I was down a point. This is from a game that I put out earlier in the year. Uh, ultimately, I'm down a point with three minutes and 30 seconds to go, but I have ball. So this is a scenario where I'm very happy just to essentially run clock, which that means if my opponent was smart, he would essentially either play the run more or maybe play short passing. At the end of the day, my game plan was clear. I mean, the majority of this game, I spent putting up, you know, long, uh, you know, one play touchdowns and stuff like that. So my opponent probably didn't read my intention very well here but at the end of the day given the fact that I only need a field goal and I have the ability to run clock as much as possible before I do that uh, the goal is very simple given the clock given the score those two things in conjunction all I really wanted to do here was go down kick a field goal win the game or score a touchdown and give him the ball back uh, with as little time as possible which is ultimately what I ended up doing and then the last tell is the actual game clock if at any point in time you see your opponent is running clock on you that's a dead giveaway that they're either going to run the ball or they're going to do a lot of short passing so that means at that point you could either run commit which is something that you can only really do if you're guaranteeing that they're going to be running the ball or you can just do a lot of hard flats a lot of short route defense because your opponent is trying to milk the clock on you and the more field they use up the harder it is to do that so ultimately they want to milk the field as much as possible meaning that they really have to uh, throw short or run so that's it that's the video if you guys want to see more videos like this more tip videos more gameplays hit the like button let me know in the comment section other than that thanks for watching man much it out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below